A couple of weeks back, we ran a poll on our Instagram asking who our audience trusted to handle Brexit going forward. The results were as follows. Today we're asking our Instagram followers a different question. Do you think that we're prepared for a no deal? And if not, how would you vote to see things go forward? Have your say on our Instagram, at TLDR News UK. So as you might know, we're headed into a big week of votes in Parliament. On Tuesday 12th of March, MPs will get another vote on May's proposed Brexit deal. This so-called meaningful vote will see MPs getting another chance to vote on May's deal, which has been adjusted slightly since they last voted on it. If they reject that deal, then on the following day, Wednesday 13th, they'll be asked if they support the UK leaving without a deal. Now this is the one that's relevant to today's video. This vote will test if MPs want a no deal, and if they think that the UK is ready for one. Today we're going to discuss the government's preparations, and then later in the week, we'll be reporting on the votes as they take place. Subscribe to this channel to make sure you don't miss out on those videos. Following an amendment by a former Conservative MP turned Independent Group member Anna Salbury, the government has published its No Deal Impact Assessment. The report, as the name suggests, details exactly how prepared businesses and the government are for a No Deal Brexit. It's certainly not an easy thing to assess, and as such, the report is broadly broken down into three segments. The government's preparedness, third party preparedness, and the impacts of a no deal. So before we start discussing how prepared everyone is, let's talk about what they think they need to be prepared for. I know we've discussed the impacts of a no deal Brexit in the past, but that was just speculation, and this is the government's official report. And at least historically, people trust the government more than media speculation. Though, in the era of alternative facts and fake news, who knows exactly which side is faring better. In the report, the government lays out a number of issues which the UK will face after Brexit, many of which you might have heard discussed before, but some of them are less regularly discussed. Firstly, there's the economic issues. The government estimate that a no-deal Brexit will cause serious economic damage to the UK, with the UK's economy being 6.3 to 9% smaller over the course of 15 years. This would affect the entirety of the UK, but the hardest hit region is expected to be the northeast of England, whose economy will see a 10.5% decrease. There will also be short-term economic disruption, but the report acknowledges that predicting the impact of this will be hard, saying no modelling can completely capture the complex ways in which the UK economy could be affected by exiting the EU. However, it's pretty safe to say that losing all of their trade deals overnight won't be amazing for the UK. The next group of issues the report highlights are problems at the border. If the UK leaves under no deal, it will become a third country in the eyes of the EU, which means that there will be no formal relationship between the two sides. This means that customs checks will be needed on the border to collect necessary tariffs. The government's report says that due to this, the availability of goods could be affected in a number of ways. That's because every consignment would require a customs declaration, with the administrative burden on businesses from customs declarations alone being around £13 billion a year. They also say that if member states would implement third country rules in full, then it could lead to goods being held within ports until and unless they were cleared by customs. However, the government does add that the food supply could remain resilient, with less than 1 in 10 food items being affected by any disruption at Dover and Calais. As we mentioned, tariffs are a major factor in this, and due to WTO rules, the EU will be forced to begin applying tariffs to UK goods. The report says that the imposition of tariffs, together with new regulatory challenges, is likely to have significant impacts, although it's impossible to accurately predict the ability of businesses to adapt. The UK service sector is in many ways more important than goods, with over 80% of the UK's GDP coming from services. According to the report, the service sector is supported by free movement and the mutual recognition of qualifications. In a no-deal scenario, the UK would risk a loss of market access and an increase in non-tariff barriers, with UK businesses facing barriers to establishment and service provisions in the EU, which they had not previously faced. Data is a somewhat niche point, and one overlooked by many. In a no-deal scenario, the UK becomes immediately subject to new sections of the EU's GDPR rules. I know, GDPR, everyone's favourite topic. The provisions of Chapter 5 of GDPR dictate the terms of data transfer to third countries. Because of this, the report comments that in the event of a no-deal exit, there will be a gap in the lawful free flow of personal data. Many UK businesses would need to work with their EU partners to secure a legal basis for the continued transfer of personal data from the EEA to the UK. 
So let's zoom out a little and look at the geographic issues that are identified in this report. As I said earlier, all parts of the UK will be affected, but some in different ways to others. As such, the government makes specific note to the impact of a no-deal Brexit in the following industries. The impact on the agriculture, forestry and fishing industries of Scotland, a country which is three times more reliant on these at-risk industries than England, accounting for 1.21% of the Scottish economy compared to 0.46%. The Welsh lamb industry, which is at risk considering 92% of Welsh lamb exports are to the EU and the food and drink sectors in Wales, Scotland, and particularly Northern Ireland. It would be remiss of us to discuss geographic issues no deal causes to the UK without talking about Northern Ireland, the centre of so much of the controversy. The government expects the impact of a no deal Brexit to hit Northern Ireland more severely and for longer than Great Britain, given the land border and the lack of executive to respond. It's expected that no deal could result in business failure, and or relocation to Ireland, which given the reliance on SMEs could have a significant impact on Northern Ireland. They also add that groups could seek to exploit gaps in law enforcement and any divergence between Northern Ireland and Ireland. Outside of the UK, no deal will also have an impact. UK nationals will retain the right to travel to the Schengen area visa-free for 90 days in every 180, but they will be unable to undertake paid activity. Although not mentioned in the report, UK nationals would likely be subjected to the European Travel Information and Authorisation System when it's implemented. This is a new system for visaless travel in the Schengen area, similar to the ESTA system in the US. The UK government is encouraging the reciprocation of citizens' rights between the UK and EU, though the Costa Amendment may lead to changes. British overseas territories and crown dependencies such as Gibraltar, Bermuda, Jersey, Guernsey and the Isle of Man will obviously also be affected. The official government line posited in the report is that the UK government continues to work closely with British overseas territories, crown dependencies and Gibraltar to prepare for all outcomes, including a no-deal scenario. Finally, in the absence of alternative arrangement, UK citizens would no longer be able to use e-gates at airports. However, at least one country, Portugal, has said that they'll set up dedicated lanes for UK nationals. So it's one thing to acknowledge the risk, but it's another thing to actually be ready for them. So how prepared is the government and how ready are third parties such as businesses? The prospect of a no deal has been a lingering thought for the government. In May 2018, the government agreed to apply a short-term continuity approach, meaning it would take unilateral action to maintain continuity irrespective of whether the EU reciprocated. The UK Treasury reported in December that they've spent £4.2 billion on Brexit preparations since 2016. While not all of that will have gone towards no deal prep, hopefully that spending means they think they're pretty ready. As a part of the preparations, steps have been made to smooth out the transition. For example, the UK will be recognising EU haulier licences as approximately 8 out of every 10 lorries and UK roads are operated by EU hauliers. This will limit disruption at border crossings. The UK will also recognise the batch testing of medicines to prevent further delays to medical supplies entering the UK. In recent months, the UK government has stepped up preparations in all departments and pressed forward with a public campaign, publishing a huge amount of guidance documentation. From the impact of flights and CO2 emissions, to EU trade, copyright, space programmes, humanitarian aids and mobile roaming charges. If you want us to dive into any of the specific information the government's offered, like this video and comment the topics you want us to cover below. Worryingly, the government says that a third of the most critical projects are not on track for completion, with the government blaming third parties and their lack of preparation. The government specifically references the issues surrounding GATT Article 24, a topic we covered in another one of our videos. The government report says that reaching an agreement as laid out in Article 24 would require an agreement with the EU based on the expectation of a future trade agreement. They go on to suggest that this might not be possible, as the politics of the EU can take precedence over economic pragmatism. So maybe that secret weapon is a bit less powerful than some people might like to think. Despite that, the government still seem to think they're pretty prepared, blaming issues on third parties. The report states that there's little evidence that businesses are preparing in earnest for a no-deal scenario. And evidence indicates that readiness of SMEs in particular is low. The lack of preparation for EU controls greatly increases the probability of disruption. This goes further than businesses not being prepared for no deal. 
Evidence suggests that individual citizens are not preparing for the effects that they would feel in a no-deal scenario, needing to complete a number of administrative tasks to ensure that their interactions with the EU are as unaffected as possible. From renewing passports, to applying for a car insurance green card, and an international driving permit to drive in the EU. The report cites survey data from January 2019, which finds that 55% of UK adults did not expect to be affected by a no-deal exit. It's hard to quantify whether this is because they believe the no-deal Brexit wouldn't occur, or whether they believe that the ramifications of such an exit were negligible or non-existent. Regardless, the government reports that individuals and businesses simply aren't ready for a no deal. To end, it's worth looking at the government's own conclusion. The short time remaining does not allow the government to unilaterally mitigate the effects of a no deal. Even where it can take unilateral action, the lack of preparation by businesses and individuals is likely to add to the disruption experienced in a no deal scenario. The government claims to be prepared for all situations, including a no deal but we'll just have to wait to see how this plays out in reality. This week's votes determine if they even have to worry about a no deal anymore. And to stay up to date with the votes, make sure you subscribe to us on YouTube and hit the bell icon. Also, we'll be sharing videos and articles through all of our social media accounts, so make sure you're following them simply by searching for TLDR News.